with the idea that your kids are going to turn out fine and your business or your career is going to turn out fine. Like I wish I'd given myself more of a pass when my kids were younger and realized that if you're a good person doing good things, which everyone who's listening to this podcast is your kids and your career are going to turn out fine. Just keep going. Welcome to the business of parenting podcast. Tune in as we discuss the principles of successful parenting as a business professional. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining me on another episode of BOP, the Business of Parenting podcast, where I get to talk about anything and everything I want to talk about when it comes to parenting. I have an amazing guest today, I have the one, the only, the oh so famous, Miss Lori <laughs> Halter with me. Lori, how you doing? I am doing great, and I'm, I told you before this, but I'm so excited. This is like so all about... <laughs> What I love, like the business of parenting. So it's, it's, it's a fun one. And I find it is. that individuals like us who um, operate businesses and manage businesses and have worked in businesses, it's just like, it, it's, it's a mindset um, yes. that I found allows me to kind of consistently execute what I need to execute in the business of being a parent. Absolutely. So. Like there's definite intentionality there that, and it, you have, it, it has to be intentional. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And we got some yeah. cool topics we're going to jam about today. Before we get into those topics, you know how I love to kick out these podcasts with little origin yes. stories. Cause I love to kind of find out myself. So let's, um, let's learn a little bit about your kids and kind of your family structure. And then we'll get into our cool topics today. Sure. Yeah. I love this. So I have two kids who are now 14 and 16. I've owned Charisma Communications now for over 20 years, which blows my mind. But what that means is that I've worked from home the entire time from yeah. them being before they were born to <laughs> now 14 and 16. And in that amount of time, we're talking decades, I've seen such a shift in the way not only businesses are run, we're now seeing more remote work. More people than ever due to the pandemic are working from home and realizing that you know some of the hassles, troubles, benefits, beauty of working from home with your family all around you. But I've had that for more than 20 years. So mm -hmm. like I said, I, you know, I have my careering podcast as well, which I'm a host of. And that really talks a lot about the things that we're talking about today. We take female industry leaders and say, how do you balance it all between your family and your career? So I'm just, like I said, I'm just so thrilled to be on. I can't <laughs> wait to talk about the business of parenting. Well, it Look, it is. It's truly a business. And I uh, love the podcast, by the way. Please, if everybody out there is watching and listening, please make sure to check out that podcast. The title of the podcast, Thank again, you. is? Careering. So it's the idea of the rear is R-E-A-R. -E it's the idea of you're rearing your family and your business at the same time. I love that, by the way. I think it's awesome. <laughs> um, but that is kind of, that's a good segue kind of into our first topic today, which yeah. is balance, uh, work, and home life. You know, I I think there's a lot of... um misconception, you know, and I, and, and I love yes. this topic. It always comes up and because I don't ever think there's a wrong answer here, but I think there's, there's definitely a misconception of the word balance. You know, you think of balance, Agreed. you think of like a scale and like these two sides of the scale are balanced. And I think a lot of time think of balance in the sense that I balance my time. So if I spend 40 hours on my work, I need to spend 40 hours on my family. Right. And that's not necessarily the truth of it, but I'd love to kind of get your take on how we balance work and home life. Yeah, I love this. And I'm so happy that you understand that because uh, part, one of the major questions we ask in the Queering podcast of all the women that come on is, how do you balance? How do you, mm -hmm. can you truly have it all? And when I started the podcast, I thought, well, no, of course you can. Like we are women here as far, of course you can. And the answer is you can, you can have it all, but you just can't have it all at once. Mm -hmm. And I love this idea because it goes along with what you're saying. The truth is, so on some days, I'm the best mom I can be. And on others, I really fall down. On some days, I'm the best business owner I can be. And on others, maybe that's not the case. Some days, I'm the best manager I can be of the employees of my company. But I know I can honestly say I'm probably never the best in all of those different areas at one time or on one day. No, but so you know, I think I the find... key is like, how do you find... You know, how do you forgive yourself yes. on the days maybe you've fallen down in one of the areas? <laughs> and how do you find that elusive balance, like you said, which may not be ours. It may be who needs me most today and in what way. It, it, exactly. And it's a balancing. See, I think it's a balancing of not necessarily time, 
as much it is uh, balancing up, I think, priorities. Yes. So, you know, we got a chance to talk a little bit about this, you know, before the podcast of how I kind of started down this path. And one of those things was turning my kids into clients. Now, look, I understand that's not a a social norm. And some people (laughs) might get totally turned off by this entire podcast by calling my kids clients. But when I think of when when I take that approach to my parenting as a business, they are the number one client. All right. If I had to, you know, I've, I've said this in another podcast, but I think it's important. It's just like, think of them as the, 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 the client that generates the most amount of revenue in your business. And if they needed something, you would just make it happen. Correct. Um, you know, so that's, that's how I, that's for me, how I kind of balance it out. You know, I, I've gone as far as doing silly things like giving my kids access to my calendar. And I love that idea. I heard you talk <laughs> about this on another episode and I was like, okay, that is brilliant. Now I'm sure you have other hacks too as well. How do you kind of like hack that balance? I Well, mine is a little different, but I do want to say before we start again, you know, I've talked to so many people and everyone is different. So mine is essentially my kids come first always. So in terms of you saying, talk about them as your most uh, important client, if they have, and I've had the flexibility of working from home. Mm -hmm. So if they had something even in first grade, that was like a little mother's day tea, that was my most important day. That was my most important meeting of the day. I did not let that drop. And, you know, I recently was speaking with Carrie Wise um, of Autofy and she was saying, I love what she said. She said, you know what? I'm not there for everything for my kids because I'm, I'm such a busy executive, but I'm there for the big things. Mm-hmm. So I think if we can determine what are the big things and, and big things, by the way, may not be, well, this is a big thing, like eighth grade graduation, you know, that is a big sure. thing, but she was talking about big things for her kids. So like, is this soccer game really important? She rescheduled um, travel arrangements to get to one of the conferences because <laughs> her kids said this, actually, mom, this game's really important. So she, she rescheduled to ensure she was at the game. So I think it's, you know, and then other things your kids, you may need to think are important. Your kids are like, I don't care if you're at the PTA bake sale, you know? So I think mm-hmm. it's just about like, what's most important, maybe even have a family meeting. What's most important. What are the events coming up that you want to make a hundred percent sure, make sure that I'm at. And then as executives and as family members, it's our responsibility then to ensure that everybody's getting what they need based on that schedule. You know, which is totally true in business as well, right? Like when we yes. think about the time that we allocate to our staff, all right, it's like there are, are clearly defined meeting times. Like, hey, yes. we're going to meet this time. We're going to have these discussions. We're going to cover this stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah. But if there's ever a time that you you really need, you know, like you just don't be afraid to ask for it. Right. And I think that's, I think that's about to me in my head, that's balance of telling my kids, yes. say, look, we have our defined schedule times and we do. We, I mean. Again, I'm a little crazy. I go too far sometimes in scheduling. So I actually, I actually <laughs> schedule play time. Um, right. Like, yeah, maybe, like, I don't know. Hey, if that works for you, that works for you, right? Well, I mean, I tell, I'll tell you the reason why honest. I do it. If, it's that's, a... if that's what gets you the play time in, <laughs> then great. Well, it, it's it's a kind of a technical hack uh, because what it is is when I put it into my calendar between 6 and 8 p.m., um, uh-huh. I put do not disturb on. So I cannot okay. receive text messages. I cannot receive calls. I cannot receive that. emails. Um, my phone just literally can't, it just won't notify me. And my team has now also got a custom and used to that so that at That's 8 wonderful. p.m. everything else starts flowing in. Um, but no, sorry, going back to this, like this balance of like, no, let's let's define the foundational, foundational time that needs to happen. If that's every yes. morning before breakfast, if it's on the weekends and this stuff, and it's like you have recital here, you have practice there, you have games there. Let's let's put that and put it into a calendar. Yeah. Um, you know what's so funny? You know how this whole calendar thing started with me? Is actually, I got a notification one day uh, from a calendar, calendar notification of like a history exam, a test. And I'm like, what? what okay. I don't, I don't have a history test. What I realized is that um, my kid's school uses G Suite. Was, oh, so it started popping up on your well, Google she, calendar. She had used my laptop or something and she had logged into it and then <laughs> she probably hit the sync button and then her calendar synced with my calendar and yeah. and 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 I just I never bothered to disconnect it, but it actually kind of created this cool hack of like me being able to talk to her and her being able to talk to me about stuff that we were doing. Like she yeah. knows she knows that me and you are in this meeting right now. 
Like, oh, that's so cool. So you kept your calendar connected yeah. so she can see what you have going on and yeah. you can see what she's got going on. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're, oh, you have it. Remember dad, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta chat with Lori today at noon. Um, uh, you, know? See, you know what I love about that too? And this is, this is something that's happened as my kids have gotten older. Uh -huh. I realized that the lessons that we're learning in business are so important for them to also see in life. So when they were younger, for me, it was all about like making them feel special, making them feel like the priority, ensuring that they never felt like business came first. Mm -hmm. And that's still important. But now that they're older, I'm trying to balance it with like, I'll talk to them at the dinner table about what happened that day. And they're, they'll now tell me like, mom, what's happening with that one client yes. that you ha you're having kind of a hard time with? Whatever happened with that? And then I talk to them about the way we like did conflict resolution or solutions I came up with, or did I bring in this contractor to help with the overflow of work? And I'm realizing that those are really important lessons for them to learn too. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it is. And I think what it is, is it shows a value of time, right? It's, yes. it's like, it's what we choose to invest our time in actually means a lot, right? You know, um, Absolutely. But, but I found that like, um, you know, and it's funny because I do this with my staff. Like my my entire staff has access to my entire calendar. That's amazing. Right? Like, I'm so, like, wait, I don't know. I I would not want my staff to have access to my calendar. Well, I mean, there, there, there's two there's two an element. <laughs> like, You're going to the lake on Wednesday. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind because I want them to know. They're like, oh, yeah. he is going to like. I'm not going to send this, or if I am going to send it, I'm going to send it and save it for another time, and then I'll send it. That's great. But 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 I just find that there was just this transparency, so that helped me manage my remote team very easily by them having access yeah. to my calendar, because yeah. I said, look, guys, you know, as a business, you know, I the business needs time from me for it to run. Okay. Right. Um. So I, I, I can't ever be the block of saying, no, the business can't have that time because it's already there. But if I give you access to my calendar, you will find the time, all right, and craft it, yes. carve it out so that the team does. So, and I did the same thing with the kids. I said, look, if you guys need that extra time and it's important, you just put it in there. So I remember yeah. a few weeks ago, I made a post because I, I, I got a notification of uh, Stranger Things new season oh yes i saw this um, on your linkedin post this yeah. is so awesome i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> no, I, I, I need I to order I, I need to order pizza and wings you know it was like between seven and ten and we're just watching nothing but stranger things and she was like <laughs> did she actually put that in this she did did. oh yeah i had to order, order veto <laughs> yes i had a veto veto pizza and uh and wings oh and then i had to stop at circle k she actually put it in the notes circle k for m m's and uh we have a candy up here in canada called big turk have you ever had a big turk Yes, and I can't okay. believe you guys like Big Turk. That's like the most <laughs> random candy ever. <laughs> but she, but she, but she put it in there. Uh, but that was her way of saying this is important to me, and I need yeah. you present. Um, I love so it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool, right? But yes, yeah. is that's what we're talking about here? Is that that's the balance? Is yeah, when needed, you're present. You know, it's like, but yes, you have to get to a place with your kids to kind of know what time means, you know, that I think you're so right. And like, sometimes I kind of beat myself up about mm -hmm. the way I handled things when my kids were younger, because on the one hand, yes, they were the priority, but I'm like, wow, did I really show them that I need my time and that my business is important, ah, but I've learned as they've gotten older, then you have the opportunity to do that. So if your kids are like four and six, they don't care what's happening with business and they do need to feel like they're the most important thing and that like they always come before business. Well, and, and that's a perfect. Older, and as they get older teenagers, that is a great time to show yes. them like, okay, guys, you're older. Here's what's going on in my day to day. This is why I have to go to this conference. This is why this meeting is so important. And I think that's just as important in their education as what they're learning in school. Mm, very, very much so. I totally agree. In fact, that's a perfect segue kind of into our next topic around not feeling guilty about loving what you do while raising little humans. Uh, yes. By the way, <laughs> love the fact that you chose the term little humans. I just, I, I just, I love that in every single way possible. Um, but, you know, I, I've, I've had the opportunity of, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds of podcasts, you know, something over yeah. five, 600 podcasts I've done. Right. And I've had the opportunity to interview a lot of people. And a lot of times this comes up in conversation prior to the recording, right? We didn't start talking about families and stuff like that. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people I've met that have felt guilty, very guilty about loving what they did when their kids were younger. And I think there's, I don't know if that's a social thing, the society just kind of making us feel guilty, but I'd love to get your take on it. Well, I don't know, but I do know that uh, also for women, it's a double mm, win. Very much so. Because that's exactly why I started the Careering Podcast. Like, I really love 
what I do. I really love my agency. I love our industry. I love, I get excited to go to work on Monday. I know a lot of people get like what they call the Sunday scaries. I have never felt that way, which I feel so blessed. But what that means is as a female, there's this weird thing in our, you know, basically our the entire human race mm-hmm. no, 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 <laughs> that right. women are supposed to love the idea of house and home and cooking and raising the kids. And it's a very outdated idea, but we still have not gotten out of it. And that you're not supposed to really be excited about the business side. And I'm like, hang on, there's got to be more people that feel like I do that are so excited about their career and their business. And I 100% believe you can be an amazing parent and an amazing worker slash owner slash CEO. Um, But it's all the things we're talking about, right? You and I have more than two decades of experience doing it. And Mm -hmm. so I think what happens is a lot of people don't think you can have both and they feel bad if they're spending time on their business and enjoying it. That's a good point. Now, I like to kind of reverse engineer why I feel a certain way, right? So it's like, why okay. why do you think people feel guilty? Is it is it a time thing? Is it uh, maybe too high expectations? Is it because it's not acceptable? I, I'm just- Yeah, you, I think it's all. I, do you? Expectations for sure, because I remember when my kids were younger, I was like, man, I just feel really bad if I'm spending too much time at work. I really, mm-hmm. my my job is to raise these, like I said, these little humans into the best people they can be. Am I doing that? Am I doing enough? And the more women I speak with on my podcast and just in general, especially when they get to the C-suite level, yes. um, are really struggling with this idea. And it's like, why? And I think it's expectations of society and expectations we're putting on ourselves. And I think once I started talking to my kids about the importance of my job and started seeing the questions they were asking me and the way they now think about life and the way they think about the way they're going to go into work and how they'd like to structure their lives to work for them. Mm-hmm. I started realizing there's so many gifts for kids to see us loving our jobs. There's more gifts than like pitfalls for sure. No, you're right. I think there's a lot of benefit for them to see that we love our job. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm confident that my kids have seen me enjoy and love my job so much that they're not going to just take a job for the sake of a salary as much as they're going to take a job that they enjoy doing. Cause they do ask me like, why do you work so much? And I said, because I yeah. don't, it's not work. It, 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 it is something yes. I enjoy to do. Therefore I do it a lot. And, uh, but that's, that's a good point. That's a good point, right? Like, you know, it's like, we shouldn't feel guilty about loving what we do, but we should teach Yes. Why we love what we do. That and like the flexibility. I mean, I talk to my kids all the time about build out your life and your career in the way that most makes sense for you. I don't buy into this. Like we just, I know everyone has to live and survive. I get that. But I don't buy into like, we just get a job to survive and we hate it. And every Sunday night we're, you know, unhappy. It's like, if you're unhappy or you need more flexibility or you feel like you're not doing, what can you do to change your situation to grow toward that? Because really what we all want in our life, right, is to feel like significance and like we're making a difference and enjoy as many hours as we can. And so why are we not doing that? Why are we not teaching our children to go find that Mm -hmm. and build that into their everyday life? But but no, that's a good point. I mean, I think... I, I maybe the, the I think this is I love going down rabbit holes by the way so like my brain's okay, kind of like me too. So, so my brain's like moving for probably faster than my than my mouth can speak or open but um <laughs> but no but I I like this because I think you know one of the reasons I was thinking uh, why I felt guilty when uh, Luke was young my youngest right I was a yeah. dealer principal at the time young dealer principal um that's a big investment not just yeah. financially just in life and in everything and and I got to be I'll, I'll be completely honest. I have no problem admitting. I, I I missed the first two years of his life. I just that is how much time I spent building building that business. And wow. you know, I felt I felt I at the time I felt guilty about that. And mm-hmm. you know, but now I look back, do I feel guilty about it now? You know, now because my my son is old enough to kind of understand you know why I love doing it and why yes. I love putting that time in there. I mean, look, he was. Too. It's not he's gonna remember. I was just gonna you know, say he's not, he's not gonna remember anyway. He's not, he's he's not gonna remember. He's not gonna remember anyways. <laughs> you know, but 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 to me, I remember and I held on to that guilt for a long time. Yeah. Until I just said no. I was just doing what I love. But it, I, I think yeah. to kind of what we've been talking about, you gotta teach them. You gotta teach them 
why you love what you do, and then you can you're able to get them involved. I think it's very cool. You're treating totally. like well, and I, I talk about guilt a lot. I, I have a lot of guilt. I'm like I said, I think maybe it's something about probably my kids being older and more understanding. But I but there's two examples I always talk about when I talk about guilt and working. One is in particular, I went to my daughters. They have a first grade Mother's Day tea, and they write a poem about you, cool. and it's adorable. <laughs> They're like, and most of the poems, most of the little things they talk about is like, my mom is a person. I dream, I love her. <laughs> yeah. but one of the things in her poem talked about how cool it was to see me work and love what I do. And I remember thinking like, oh, this is so neat. She getting it. She's understanding. And then the second story I tell whenever I feel guilty is I started the querying podcast three years ago. Mm -hmm. Like I said, our kids are little sponges. They're listening. They're paying attention to everything we do. And so my birthday came, my birthday's in July. This month is my birthday. And three years ago, uh, my son, who at the time was 13, said, Hey mom, I want to interview you on your podcast. And I was like, well, I'm the interviewer, but why do you want to interview me? That's so cute. And he said, well, your podcast is about leading women and you're a leading woman and you take charge in your industry. And I just think maybe you should get some of that. You should be on the other side. Oh, and awesome. so he did all this research into like the best questions to ask. And, um, you know, it's still one of my favorite memories because again, it showed me that yes, we feel guilty, but our kids are learning and him thinking of me as a female leader and understanding what I'm trying to do for other women in our industry, that we didn't talk about that. That just came from him watching me do my daily, you know, job and life. Well, you know what? Our, our kids are a byproduct of their environment, just as we are a byproduct yes. of our environment when we grew up. And, you know, to, if, if you're, if, if, if they're in an environment where they're seeing the parent come home and just hate their work. Right. How do you really think that they're ever going to go off and find something that they love to do? You know, yes. it's, 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 it's just, it's, it's, a, but I love, but, but I think to be able to express that knowledge about loving what you do and, and, and the importance of it, you have to treat me like a little human. And I, I keep going, yeah. I want to go back. Cause I love that. Route. I want to go down that route a little bit. It's that sometimes we, we just kind of, we treat our kids like kids. They're like they don't yes. need to know. They don't need to know. They're just kids. Right. Exactly right. Exactly. I talk about people this to about this a lot, actually. And this actually kind of has this also little humans is one thing and people tend to, <clears throat> you're right, think of them as little kids. Even when I go to my friend's houses to hang out, I hang out with the kids first and I talk to them and I find out all about them. And you would not have, you would not believe the amount of parents that are like, thank you so much for sitting down and actually acting like they're a, a person in the room. And then as teens, I think it's, fascinating you know um people always say like oh teens are so hard they're so mm -hmm. difficult i love teens their thoughts like if you sit down and really talk to teens and get their thoughts and ideas and not just my kids like my kids friends they are fascinating the things they think and do and so i think just yes let's remember that they're human beings they're yes they're younger than us but they're still people with their own thoughts and needs and wants and you know it, I, I think we tend to forget that no, no, yeah. and, I, and I love the fact you bring that up, which is actually a good segue coming to our next topic. But I love, I, I'm, a, I'm with you. See, teens, for good or worse, all right, uh, their ideas are their ideas. I mean, yeah. they, they haven't collected enough worldly influence, <laughs> all right, to, to, to determine that that's, you know what I mean? Like, their ideas are legitimately going to be theirs. Um, yes. Good, good or bad, it's going to be like, there's like no, They haven't learned yet that you have to keep a lid on some of this stuff, like filter some of this stuff. Oh, and that's no what actually makes them fantastic because you're getting, you're get, like you're saying, for a teen, you're getting their true, unfiltered ideas and thoughts about the world. And if you can really look at it in that way, like, wow, I am getting the unfiltered version of how these people feel. Yes. It's really wonderful. It, it is. And that's just, we're going to bet at it. it is what it is. You are getting the unfiltered yeah. because as we grow up and, you know, become young adults, we learn filters and, yes, <laughs> but not when we're, well, in my case, my hundred <laughs> percent, like you learn you uh, and coming, bringing it back to business, yeah. you know, in business, we learn what is and is not appropriate and what you can say and how you need to be neutral on certain things and how, Maybe yes. you feel strongly about this, but you know not to say it in the company meeting because it may not be something that is neutral enough for all to agree with. 
Teens have none of that. They have none of that. None. So they're going to say, none. they're going to say whatever they want. Whatever they want, it's however they want it. And hilarious. And whatever tone they want to say it yes. in as well. Yes. Um, that's one thing I find with teens. There's, there's no concept of tonality. Um, and the drama <laughs> is oh, like sky yeah. high. Like Best. everything is the end of the world. There's of no course. perspective in terms of like, this is like one thing, especially my daughter, because she's into like, you know, she's 14. So it's all about boys. Yes. This happened. She'll come home and be like, mom, let me tell you the tea that happened. Here's the tea that happened today. Here's and it trauma. just cracks me up because it's like, this is so not a big deal. <laughs> is, I know, but it, but it's fun. So, but that's a good segue into our last topic of today is that the difference between being at home for a teen versus when they were little kids. Yes. Um, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about this off camera, which I think was kind of fun is like our businesses do this, right? Our businesses yeah. evolve from, a, a small kid into kind of an adolescence to a young adult. And there's in, in what we have to give our kids in those different stages is very similar to what we have to give our businesses um, yes. in those different stages as well. You know, as, as, as kids, it's very rule based. It's like, you need to do this by this time. And that has to happen here. If we move this over here, this action happens and so on. And then it starts yeah. to evolve, but I'd love to kind of get your take on that. Yeah. I love this idea. And even the amount of care. So you think about like, you think about the, you know, a business that's starting like the first one to five years. It's all like you're putting everything you have into yes. that business. You're putting all your ideas, all your effort. You know, kids one to five. That's exactly what's happening. Yeah, they're very oh, needy. Like, they need you, know, you every second. You're like, okay, we've kind of hit the middle point in our stride, but things could still go awry and could go off the rails. So let's keep track of them, give them rules. Now I'm in like what I think of as the golden age or the sweet spot for teenagers. What I'm realizing is. They don't want to hug me. They don't want me anywhere around. They're embarrassed <laughs> to be seen with me, which by the way, I'm the coolest. So whatever. But um, I think what I've learned <laughs> with the teen years is I still need to be there. I still need to be guiding. They still want me home. They may be out with their friends. They want me home so we can talk at the end of the night if they're having any issues. And I love this idea of it being much like a business because my business is now over 20 years and it is running perfectly it's running smoothly i know what i'm doing my staff knows what they're doing but there still needs to be a guiding hand i still need i can't be asleep at the wheel I, nope. you know it's still important for me to be leading but i think it's very much like raising teenagers now you're around you're there for advice you're there for guidance but they don't want anything to do with you <laughs> well, but but, it, but it's true you you i find as teenagers especially even, and even as they become young adults um you're you're coaching Yes, Where, you know, exactly. er, early on in your, in the business and early on with kids, it's training. It, you got to train yes. exactly what to do and how to do it. Right. Yeah. And then, and, and then, you know, I think kind of those middle years is, is, is development. All right. Yes. A lot of development happens, you know, between, I would say nine and, you know, probably 13, just when the team. Right, so so or even 15, you know, like nine to 15. Yes. I think like nine to 15. There's a lot of, chunk. there's a lot of development. We have to kind of yeah. guide them through um, maybe hand in hand on some of this development. And, yeah. and, and then it gets to a point where, you know, where I think you are kind of with, 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 with your, uh, your young ones is, is a coaching where you get to the point where now it's, yeah. I got to coach my business. And that's where I think both our businesses are at right now, where I just, I've, I've done all the training. I've developed out the business. All right. Yep. Now, you know, I can do an hour or two of coaching every week and the business is good to continue yeah. to move forward. Sometimes we have to fall backwards and I have to do retraining and redevelopment, just like with kids. Sometimes you have to go back. That's right. It. Like, right. That's the, when they go to the party in the woods and you're like, uh oh, <laughs> nope. Now we got to like recalibrate. Let's, let's go back to our goals and our objectives. That is, that is true. And re, re, you know, create what we need, what the expectations are here. That's exactly right. But you know what I think, and then that's why I'm doing this podcast, honestly, you know, that's, that's why, you know, I'm putting kind of this content out there is that, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there with the business mindset, you know, mm -hmm. training, development, coaching, you know, I think a lot of people out there that can get wrap, wrap their heads around that. And it's just, um, look, there was no, my kids didn't come with a manual. Unfortunately, right. did yours by any chance? Did I miss one? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. But maybe we should start one, Jason. Maybe that's our next business. Our we next should start a manual. <laughs> and I want to be as thick as like a manual for a car. Like you know, that's and, it has and to be like, like the index would be like if this happens, oh, like, go to Appendix A. Yes, exactly, if this happens, exactly. Go to Appendix one thousand five hundred and sixty-two. <laughs> yeah, when this warning light comes on, this is what. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
<laughs> but but, but no, no there, I think it's great. There's some truth to it, right? They didn't come with one, so therefore, you know, I've I, I made a, a crap ton of mistakes, you know. Um, and I wish someone kind of told me earlier on that, you know, my kids have this this training session, this season in their life, and then they're going to go through yeah. a development season, and then. I am going to have to play coach, which are three very different roles that I don't think everyone is equipped necessarily to do. I know I wasn't. I'm I'm probably one of the worst trainers in the world because I <laughs> fundamentally just don't understand. If I told you the first time how to do it, why can't you do it the next time? <laughs> you know, and that's such a good point because just because you're bad in one stage doesn't mean, or not even bad, just because you have challenges in one stage doesn't mean that throughout this training development coaching role, you're not going to be an amazing coach. Like I yes. really, really like the point where my kids are at 14 and 16. I'm here to guide them. The hard work in my mind is done. Like I've done everything I can. My son's 16 in two years, he's going off to college. <laughs> so really at this point, it's like, just don't be an asshole, right? <laughs> exactly. Just be a good person yes. in the world and I'll have done my job. <laughs> well, and, and, and you're right. And I think, um, you know, I I, I, will, I definitely think we've identified another podcast we're going to have to do at some point because I think yes. that, you know, we can start talking about, you know, what does it mean to be a trainer? What does it mean to be someone who participates in the development? And and what yep. are those those, those mindsets? Um, because um, I'm still, I'm, I'm getting close to the coaching phase on one. I'm still in the development phase on another. Yep. And I'm in training phase on my youngest. Yeah, you're so, like in like, all three. The interesting thing about you is you're in all three <laughs> categories right now. Yep, I kind of have that weird kind of like I have seven, nine, and then eleven teen. Um. Yeah, <laughs> eleven teen. I know that one well. You know I know that. that well? I know that face very you know well. <laughs> well, hey, look, uh, Lori. I know it's the uh, our time is up today, but this has been a really, really fun conversation, and I'm sure we're probably going to do this again soon. Um, but for uh, I love finishing off these podcasts with kind of a, um, a, a last question, right? It, okay. it, for for if you had one piece of advice for for any parents out there, new parents or soon to be parents, what advice would you share with them? I love this. Just know that whatever you're doing, don't, first of all, don't feel guilty. So that's what we've been talking about because mm -hmm. whatever you're doing, as long as you do it with intentionality, with the idea that your kids are going to turn out fine and your business or your career is going to turn out fine. Like I wish I'd given myself more of a pass when my kids were younger and realized that if you're a good person doing good things, which everyone who's listening to this podcast is your kids and your career are going to turn out fine. Just keep going. I love it. Hey, Lori, thank you so much for just being open, you know, and yeah, just being thank honest. You. I love this like, topic is so fun. I told you a million times like this. I'm so excited. You're introducing this podcast. It's really needed in the space. And so thank you for having me on. No, I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Have yourself an amazing day. You too. Thanks for tuning in to the Business of Parenting podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.